Okay. Good evening. Tonight's committee of adjustment hearing is being held by video conference and live stream video on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variances consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and, effect, and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca and you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number is also posted on the screen below the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call. When you call in, staff will ask for your name and item that you wish to address and telephone number. And further instructions will be provided to you to call back to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls the interested parties, Sec secretary treasurer will unmute you and when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of their application, answer any questions that may arise maximum of five minutes will be provided for a presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their full name and address for the record. A five minute presentation is allocated to each presenter. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will also be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns found in staff report, particularly with the uh, proposed conditions, that will be the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for a decision and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Land Tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days of minor variances and 15 days for consent applications to the applicant and agent and any other person who has filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Land Tribunal and the last date to appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in this hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and any other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. Um, we don't have any regrets this evening. Do I have any declarations of procuring interests? Okay, I see none. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Madam sorry, Secretary sorry, Treasurer. Sorry, Madam Chair. Uh, oh. Ian Fleming, Mr. Ian Fleming. Okay, hi, Ian. Sorry, I didn't see your hand. It's lagging yeah, a little sorry. bit on my end. I apologize. No problem, Madam Go Chair. Go ahead. Uh, for uh, CABA056 for 87 Allen Street, I have a conflict. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any others? No, okay. Um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, I'll take deferrals or withdrawal of applications at this time. If there's anyone in, who is in attendance who would like to uh, request a deferral, uh, this will be the time to do so. Please raise your hand. Thank you. 
Okay, so if there is no one, uh, we'll proceed to the first uh, ma matter in our agenda tonight, which is CEV 051 of 2022 at 119 Fernelli Crescent. Again, it's CEV 051 of 2022 at 119 Fernelli Crescent. Who is the agent? There. Apologies for that. Hello, good evening, Mr. Webb. Go ahead, sir. Hi there. Um, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Committee of Adjustment and uh, Town of Oakville staff. Thank you for considering our request for minor variance. My name is Blake Webb, along with my wife, Sonia Lancioni. We are the property owners and applicants for this minor variance application before you today. <clears throat> uh, we've lived at this address since uh, 2015, along with our three children. We are asking for a uh, variance today to allow us to construct an in-ground pool in our backyard. Our proposal fits within the existing character of the neighborhood, as there are several properties in our immediate neighborhood with similar sized or larger pools. Our proposal meets all the standard setback requirements within the zoning bylaw for the town of Oakville, which is 1.5 meters from the rear and side property lines. What makes our property uh, a little more unique is that we do back onto a park where there is the Trans-Canada Energy Pipeline. Um, Trans-Canada does have a right of way, <clears throat> excuse me, that immediately abuts our rear property line. As such, they do have restrictions regarding constructions within the immediate vicinity of the right of way. They require consent for any proposal to build within three meters of their, of their right of way. And coincidentally, to support that, the town of Oakville has in their zoning bylaw a requirement that there be a three meter setback from their, from their right of way. So if you look at slide one there, that area in red, that's, that represents where the three meters is. And you can see our pool does encroach within that. We have been in communication with TransCanada Pipelines. They have reviewed our proposal and have provided their consent to allow us to build the pool with, at, with a setback of 1.53 meters. Their written consent is included within the application package that's before you today. Um, our proposal has also been reviewed by the Town of Oakville Planning Department, um, and they have also indicated their support for our proposal. Um, as as TransCanada Trans Pipeline has consented, um, they also do not feel that, um, they, they feel that this is in the character of the neighborhood, and it meets the, the four tests of the Planning Act for minor variance approvals. We have been in communication with our neighbors, um, we've showed them a proposal and nobody has expressed any concerns. Yesterday, we did receive comments from the Oakville Fire Department um, as they are included on the circulation, circulation list for the Committee of Adjustment. Um, while the Fire Department did not express any objection to the one variance that is before you today, uh, that being the three meter setback from the pipeline, they did have a comment with regards to the proposed location for the pool equipment. Um, if you can go to slide two, please. Um, on slide two, you can see that <clears throat> our pool equipment is proposed to be on the east side of the property, um, uh, just next to our house. The required setback for pool equipment within the Town of Oakville zoning bylaw is that it must be set back 0 0.6 meters from the side lot line. Our pool equipment does comply with this minimum setback as it will be 0 0.865 meters from the lot line. The fire department did raise the concern that the location of the pool equipment there would have an impact on a 1.2 meter clearance um, for emergency access. Now within their comments, they didn't cite any regulatory requirement for this 1.2 meter clearance. Um, and if we didn't have this issue with the pipeline at the rear of our property, we would have met all other zoning requirements and this would have been approved as of right. That being said, um, within the fire department's comments, they did, um, they did suggest that they would be okay with the current location of our pool equipment, as long as we could maintain the 1.2 meter clearance on the opposite side of the house. Now, if you go to si slide three, please. This is a picture of the west side of our property. So this is the side of our property where we are not gonna have the pool equipment. As you can see that there is a clear right of way there. It is 1.37 meters from the side of our house 
to the, the fence, which is also the property line. Um, and then if you go to slide four, this again is the still the same side of the house. It's just a view from the back to the front. Um, eventually, essentially where you're standing there is um, where the edge of the pool would be. And you can see that there's no projections uh, into that clearance. Um, and we don't plan on having any, any projections there. There's no air conditioner there. There's no vegetation. This is the side of the house that we use on a day-to-day -day basis for the access to our backyard. Uh, for contrast, if you go to slide five, this is the side of the house where we were proposing to put the pool equipment. This is again going from front to back. Um, as you can see to the right, you can see the edge of our neighbor's air conditioning unit. Ours is there as well. There is vegetation. Um, and there's a bit of a narrow opening for the gate there. Um, and then if you go down the slide six, <clears throat> this is again, same side. This is just looking from back to front. On the right side of the photo is where our pool equipment would be. Um, and as you can see, it wouldn't have any real impact on what, um, what the current situation is there. It's not gonna make it the situation any worse. And we would keep the other side again clear for um, easy access. So um, I don't wanna take up any more of your time. If you have any questions, I'm happy to field them, um, but we are hoping that you can support our application for you today. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Webb. Are there any questions of Mr. Webb at this time or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in for this application or showed interest in speaking to this matter? So, Madam Chair, there is no phone calls. Okay, very well. Um, we'll take the matter into committee then. Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, um, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of this minor variance, having also taken into account the presentation this evening. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Photos are very helpful um, uh, and uh, they, they paint quite a good picture. Um, I will note that there seems to be no one from the public that wishes to speak in objection to this minor variance. I, I note the applicant has canvassed his neighbors. Um, and I also note that there is a letter on file from TransCanada Pipeline, a letter of consent, December 1st, 2021. Uh, taking all of this into consideration, I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for the variance subject to the following conditions, which are that the proposed pool be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated January 19th, 2022, subject to obtaining a pool permit from transportation and engineering, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision. If a development engineering permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the presentation. Okay, thank you, Ms. Murray. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support. Okay, the application has been approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, application CAV052 of 2022 um, at 224 Mohawk Road. Again, this is application CAV052 of 2022 um, at 224 Mohawk Road. Um, I'll note on record that there are uh, 10 letters of support for this application. Um, who is the agent? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Matthew Frederick Hansen. I'm the authorized agent. Uh, business address is 107 Gladstone Avenue in Hamilton, Ontario, postal code L8M2H8. Um, sorry, Mr. Frederick, can you, can you pronounce that for me again? That's Frederick Angeli. Frederick Angeli, okay. That's right. Um, <laughs> sir, would you kindly turn your camera on? Sure uh, can, so yeah. we can see you and... Yeah. Um, 
then um, go ahead and you can do your presentation. Uh, staff have it if you've submitted it. Sure. Yeah, um, I'm ready to start my application or um, my presentation. If oh. there we go. Okay. Okay, so I can just continue. So uh, we can go on to the next slide here. So here we see our grants request. It's to permit the attached private garage project not more than 1.78 meters from the face of the main wall, where the maximum permitted is 1.5 meters. So we're asking for a 0.28 meter increase. And the second variance is to permit a maximum height of 9.28 meters, where the maximum permitted is 9 meters. So again, a 0.28 meter increase. Next slide, please. Um, as per the uh, planning uh, staff report, um, the proposal was evaluated against uh, these specific policies. Uh, they have to do with massing, architectural character, um, separation distances and setbacks, um, mostly to make sure this proposal is compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, shadowing and overlook was also um, considered. Next slide, please. Uh, variance number one is for the garage protection. There was no, um, this was approved or uh, supported by city staff. So I'll just breeze through this and defer to committee for, for any questions. But uh, just to touch on this, the front porch roof is tied to the garage proje uh, projection, minimizing the presence of the garage. The intent of the increased garage is to create a larger, larger porch, more suitable for outdoor lounging. Um, and again, no objection by the planning staff. So we'll defer to committee for questions. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, variance two is for the height. Uh, just wanted to quickly uh, compare this to the policies that are in play here um, in the neighborhood of the character. So we're proposing a one-story build, which is a bungalow ranch style. Um, it matches the existing character of the neighborhood, which is generally um, bungalows. We have a gable roof that's sloping from front to back, which also matches the existing character orientations and massing of the uh, neighborhood. We're proposing brick and siding as our exterior finishes, which generally also matches the character of the neighborhood. Um, we are actually less than the required height requirement when measured from grade at the house. Um, we're 8.84 meters from grade to the peak of the roof when measured at the house. Uh, we're only higher when considering uh, the established grade, which is um, set by the elevation of the middle of the front of the property. So really only a very small portion of the peak is above the max height. All other setbacks in general uh, massing zoning requirements uh, are as of right. Um, we have no second story here, so uh, really no overlook concerns. Um, and again, generally we're meeting, meeting the as of right massing and size, and uh, we think that this matches the neighborhood character. Next slide, please. So here we can see highlighted in red the uh, portion of roof that's actually above uh, the height requirement. It's about 11 inches. Again, from grade at the side of the house, we do meet the height requirement. It's only at the middle of the front of the lot, uh, established grade where we are above the requirement. Um, next slide, please. Um, the planning report did mention um, not being able to support this height variance uh, as there is no uh, design consideration uh, stated in the application. I just wanted to quickly touch on that here. On the right, we can see a hatched uh, roof line, which kind of shows our ceiling lines inside of the house. So uh, fairly intricate ceiling lines. Uh, this was desired for the architectural look. Um, the slope of the trusses in the roof frame were guided by structural engineer for building and manufacturing efficiency. Uh, we set the main level above grade height. We set the ceiling height that the owners were after. Um, and after consulting with the engineer and gaining um, roof slope information from them, we ended up with our peak. Uh, we checked this height, which was 8.84 meters from the grade. Uh, we saw that it was below the requirement of nine meters and we proceeded. Uh, once we received the topographic survey, we learned that established grade is about 17 inches lower than grade at the house. Uh, when in person, the lot appears relatively flat and actually there is a low point at the middle of the front of the lot um, which affects the established grade calculation. If we look at each corner of the lot they're actually both higher than the middle of the lot. So truly um, you know this this 
height is reduced by another six inches. So overall, we're, we're roughly about six inches when averaging the established grade uh, across the front of the lot, about six inches over the maximum height. Um, since the owner was requesting a garage wall variance, we decided to apply for the height increase. Um, this was mainly to avoid revisiting the structural design or lowering the ceiling height. Uh, obviously, this has some cost and time associated with it for the owner. We also noted in the planning report a concern around vertical large front window. Uh, we were a little bit unclear about this reference as uh, the windows on the front elevation are broken up and, and we do believe that all window locations are, are located within as of the right position. Next slide, please. Just to show the front of the house here in the lot, um, again, looking very flat from the streets uh, in the left corner of the lot and the right corner of the lot, are actually a bit higher than the, the front of the middle of the lot. There's a dip there, which kind of um, lends to the increased height variance. Uh, so from the middle of the lot, we're 11 inches over the maximum. But from the each end of the lot, we're only about six inches over the maximum. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, here we can see uh, the portion of the roof that is above um, the maximum required. Uh, we believe that this is a minor variance, as the variance is generally maintain the intent of policies and bylaws in place. The overall proposal matches the neighborhood. We're proposing a one-story house that has a similar character to the existing houses on the street. Uh, the portion of the roof that extends above the requirement is minor and minimizes shadowing and overlook concerns. Uh, we meet all other bylaw requirements related to massing, uh, setbacks, etc. Uh, we also have 10 letters of support and uh, another one actually came in, so we do have 11 letters of support. That wraps up my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Fratangeli. Are there any items of clarification or questions at this time? Mr. Talowski, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a question for staff. Um, I, I had the same question the applicant just raised that the common asking of the building don't seem to really uh, be in line with the application in front of us in particular the comment to the vertical windows to the left um, which I don't see anywhere on the elevation and um, so I'd like to staff to comment on what the, was meant by that and I guess to staff, I was actually um, surprised by the comments with respect to height here. And hopefully you can elaborate on the impact because when I look at this house, um, we're not looking at a two-story house that we typically see with a partial slope truncated roof and a flat roof to fit under the height by law. They've designed a house that reads as a pretty much like a bungalow with a front dormer with a sloped roof that's a significant distance back from the face of the house. So I, I don't understand that there'd be an impact here, but uh, I'd like to understand staff's view as to why they think there's an impact. And if they could, if Catherine, you could also respond to the comment about the windows. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I first want to mention that comment in there was in there an error. And I um, appreciate the applicant pointing that out, and I'd like to rescind that comment. Are you hearing a feedback? Yes, we are. I don't, I don't know if technical staff. I'm not sure why that's happening. Um, so I, I think you, you heard that I said I'd um, like to rescind that portion of the comments. And this is a situation and hearing um, the presentation and hearing the applicant kind of speak about the, the design and, and talking through issues of grade at the front and, and kind of to capturing that whole application. I think um, this is one where I would actually change my opinion in terms of what we had been has been put forward in the comments and I can start to see how this has less of an impact. I think in um, initially doing the site visits and seeing how there's so many bunk, like kind of the one story elements of the street, um, seeing that increase in height was one of those things that um, came across as it, it could have a negative impact, but then now taking a further look at it and um, considering the design further, I, I can see how this could be appropriate in this neighborhood. And um, I leave the decision to the committee to determine how they feel about this application based on the uh, letters of support, the, the comments from the applicant. Okay, 
Thank you, Ms. Bokershu. Any further questions or items of clarification? I see none. Okay. Uh, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm going to move approval of the application as applied for. I find that it does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. As I indicated earlier, um, it's always difficult when you get one of the first uh, houses being rebuilt amongst some older bungalows. And I think in this situation, the applicant's done an excellent job and not building to the maximum permitted and um, coming up with a design that does uh, fit um, with the existing neighborhood. And I would also note that uh, apparently the residents agree with uh, 10, possibly 11 letters of support. And I would make that approval and bear with me because I'm going to need to find dates on drawings here. Uh, that the approval would be based on proceeding in general accordance with the site plan dated, it looks like uh, 110221 and similar for the elevations and that a building permit issue within two years. Very well, thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none, all those in support. Did we lose Mr. Hardcastle? I don't see him. Oh, there we go. Okay, all those in support? Okay. Um, okay, your uh, application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Fagnelli. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, committee members. Have a great night. Um, application CAV 053 of 2022 at 298 Queen Mary Drive. Again, this is application CAV 053 of 2022 at 298 Queen Mary Drive. Mr. Brown. Yes, good evening, uh, Madam Chair and members of the committee and Secretary. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with my video. Um, it says that it can't start video on my computer. Hang on one second. That's okay. We'll give you a minute to figure that out. I, I do need, need to remind the public that if they do wish to speak to an item on an agenda, they can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. 6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instruction to join the video conference. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why my video is not. Uh, I try to set everything up so that it works, and of course, it doesn't when I need it to. So that's okay. That's okay. It's, uh, I, I assume you know, it's the in, in the top corner of the Zoom application. And if you're on the computer, I think it's the bottom. Yes, I, I see you... it and it, I keep getting an error that says cannot start video, failed to start the video camera, select another okay. video. That's fine, yeah. thank you. Um, have you prepared a presentation for this evening? Uh, no, I have not prepared a presentation. I think it's fairly self-explanatory according to the application itself. Okay, um, uh, staff will put uh, up your um, drawings uh, that were submitted with the application. And then um, if you uh, care to speak to it, that's fine. If you would like us to uh, just simply ask you questions for the, in terms of the first and second floor edition that you're applying for, I know with a minimum flankage yard. Um, so yes. if you- uh, Yes, uh, the only uh, comment that I really have to uh, address is regarding the 
uh, existing uh, garage uh, is in, um, it, we need uh, to reduce the flankage yard and that's really the only issue that we have uh, with, with the zoning and that's the only um, application that we're making to the um, committee at this time. Okay, very well. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Brown at this time from the committee members? Our items of clarification, Ms. Murray, go ahead. Um, um, Madam Chair, through you, a uh, question for town staff. Um, if I'm reading this right, that the reduced flankage yard ER setback, it's an existing condition right now to the attached garage. So it's, it's merely um, uh, setting it right with a variance. Is that correct? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yep, my understanding is that it's that setback that there is to that existing one-story garage and they're reconstructing a one-story garage. So then that variance needs to be sought to allow for that. Um, but it should be a similar condition as what the, what the feel is now since it's as well as a one-story garage. Thank you. Sorry, my voice is a bit funny. If I may comment. Yes, go ahead. Yes, the, the footprint to the existing garage is not to change. It's simply to, I guess, legalize it would be the best scenario. This was obviously built prior to or without it being uh, in the acceptable setback at the time. I have no idea when it was built. It will be reclad with siding to match the renovated structure, the main dwelling. Um, and we're just hoping that we can alleviate or soften some of the streetscape presence to the road by adding a gable uh, or a peaked roof and getting rid of the rather eyesore flat roof that is currently there. So no change in footprint, just changing the siding and adding a peaked roof. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Any other uh, questions or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Ready to take a, a motion. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the written materials, uh, including the staff report, and having heard the uh, comments from the applicant, I'm satisfied that the uh, requested variance conforms to the four tests of the Act, and I'll put forward a motion of approval. Um, that motion should be subject to two standard conditions, those being um, that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawing stated February 15th, 2022, and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued. Very well, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, have a good night. You too. Okay, um, application CAV 054 of 2022 at 482 Brookside Drive. Again, this is application CAV 054 of 2022 at 482 Brookside Drive. If there's anyone who'd like to speak to this application, uh, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Um, we do have uh, two letters of objection uh, on record from a Mr. and Mrs. Patterson and a Mr. and Mrs. Schneider. Um, go ahead, Mr. Kobasenko. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and committee members. Thank you for having me. For the record, my name is Tom Kolbasenko from Our Cool Blue Architects. Um, our address is 450 Bronte Street South, Unit 213. Milton, Ontario, and I'll be presenting today uh, 482 Brookside Drive. Is it possible to rotate the pages in the PDF? Uh, unfortunately, we can't rotate now. 
Um, well, it'll it'll make for a more interesting presentation. <laughs> Should I go ahead? I think they're trying to figure it out. I tr try going to view. And then there should be a rotate view. Yeah, and then you can, there you go. Thank you. So we are, um, on behalf of our clients, uh, we've designed a uh, two-story home um, and are requesting three uh, variances. The first one, if you can go to the next slide, please. The home is designed in the contemporary prairie style uh, which is becoming quite more popular these days in, uh, you know, sort of in the transition neighborhoods. Uh, the three variances we are requesting are to permit a, um, a larger tandem garage, um, which is the 57.4 meters versus the 45 square meters permitted. It is tandem. It doesn't have any impact, any visual impact on the street. Just a regular uh, two-car garage door. Uh, the second sorry excuse me yes sir. uh sorry madam chair uh, can you have the applicant's agent speak closer to the microphone okay I'm having, sure I'm, I'm just having troubles hearing sorry okay thank you mr flemington thank you is this is this better can that's better me? thank you mr kobasenko yeah uh we have a thumbs raised up okay <laughs> Okay, so the first variance is to repeat is to, to allow to permit a larger garage area, 57.4 meters versus the 45 square meters are permitted. Second variance is an increase uh, in residential floor area uh, from 41% uh, to 44.5%. Uh, and a third variance that we are requesting is an increase in uh, lot coverage from 35% to 37.3%. Um, I just want to make a note that um, in the town records, uh, the lot area was actually larger than uh, what our surveyor had confirmed. Um, uh, and this was questioned by zoning staff at the time of the, uh, the review prior to the hearing. Um, uh, zoning staff were finding that the, the lot area was 6.99 meters square. Whereas we're actually applying with a smaller lot area of 693.27. So the variances uh, would be even small, would be smaller if um, the area of the lot in the town records was being used. Uh, not a huge difference, but I thought I would mention it because we did uh, want to make sure that we're using accurate numbers as verified by the land survey. Next slide, please. Um, so this is a, a uh, fairly typical older bungalow um, uh, in this neighborhood. Um, it is, the property is in a fairly uh, poor condition at the moment. It's overgrown. It hasn't been maintained very well. Uh, there is an existing single car garage uh, towards the side and back of the property, which we're planning to remove together with the, um, the existing dwelling as well. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> this is the image of the site plan. So we are respecting all the setbacks, front setback, side yard setbacks, and the, re and the rear setbacks, no impact there. Uh, the second floor is stepped in. Um, we, we work quite closely, or I should say we, we, we sought input from um, uh, planning staff, from, um, from Catherine and, and, and her staff, and went back and forth uh, probably three or four times on this application to um, mitigate the impacts of massing on this, uh, on this design. Uh, so we are stepping in all around. Um, what else can I say about this? Um, next, next slide, I guess we can go to the next slide. This is an arborist, preliminary arborist report that we've obtained. It, it is the images upside down in, in relation to our other images um, within the presentation. So Brookside Drive in this case is to the top of the page. 
Um, our new project will affect three trees, and I thought we would just bring it up since the photographs do show prominent trees in the front. Uh, they are all private trees, and, and they have been uh, evaluated by an arborist, and um, we don't believe there's any concern with moving those, those three private trees to facilitate uh, this project. Other than that, um, the two uh, public trees and the trees in the back will be protected fully as per tree protection guidelines, and there should be no impact to those, uh, to those trees. Next slide, please. Um, these are plans. They're not really necessary to, to show, but I just wanted to kind of make a couple of points. There's really nothing in the basement that would impact our application. Uh, so we can skip to the next, uh, next slide. Um, the second floor is a fairly standard um, uh, second floor. We, we do have one of the variances that we're asking for lot coverage is primarily as a result of uh, the desire, our, our client's desire to have a screened in rear porch. Um, basically all of that area is, is attributed to, uh, to the covered rear porch element, which is a single story uh, element. Uh, the front porch is fairly modest um, and it's only the one and a half meters that's permitted by the bylaws, so there's no, uh, no impact there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this second floor illustrates, I think, what we try to do with, with stepping in the second floor uh, in relationship to the first. So you can see that along the front, we have the porch element. Uh, we have the large roof uh, on top of the garage, which, which presents a, uh, a roof element in the front. Um, on the south side, I guess, uh, we're stepping away from the garage quite significantly. Less so on the west side. However, we do have a roof element that continues on the lower level. And then in the back, uh, the covered porch acts as a uh, as kind of an apron in the back to really mitigate the massing towards the back of the house and uh, introduce a one-story element. Next slide, please. Um, here are the front elevations and the west elevation. So again, a contemporary yet um, with traditional elements, uh, sloping roof lines. Uh, the materials are stone and wood siding along the front. Uh, nice big windows. Um, and then as we go around the side of the house, we've, we've wrapped the lower roof area roofs around again to break up some of the massing and facilitate a uh, sort of a more natural stepping of the second floor. Uh, the second floor also steps back from the front of the house. So there's a stepping back um, from, from the front two piers on both sides of the house and so Next slide, please. Um, and similarly in the back, uh, the roofing elements, sorry, this is the, yeah, this is the back. So the covered porch is illustrated there, uh, which breaks up the back wall and then above the garage on the south elevation that uh, roof continues as well. Next slide, please. Um, just wanted to highlight some of the other variances that have been um, recently heard and approved by the committee within the area. Uh, so 483 Brookside, just across the street, this was, I believe, in front of the committee just a couple of months ago, just fairly recently, where this application was seeking a similar 43.57 uh, increase in the uh, residential floor area. Again, we would be in that same range if we use the town's data, it's like we used our surveys data. Next slide, please. And then just uh, one street away in the same neighborhood, uh, there are two other applications that were recently approved, uh, 486 Trillium at um, yeah, a similar uh, residential for a little bit smaller. And the next one, the next slide, the one adjacent to it. Next slide, please. 482, probably the closest in terms of what we're asking for is uh, 482 Trillium. That uh, was at 4.45. So it's clear that the neighborhood is in transition. There is uh, beyond these three or four that we've shown here, there's, there's quite a few um, new builds in the area. Um, so lots of activity. And I believe it's, uh, it's all obviously in character. And, and so these, this house we believe will fit nicely into what's happening uh, within this neighborhood. Uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, happy to. Okay, uh, Mr. Khobasenko, you're you're aware that we have 
um, two letters of objection? Yes, I am. And uh, I, I just wanted to ask you to clarify, is the property subject to uh, DESB? Uh, yes, it is, yeah. Okay, so um, then the issues of drainage, uh, the concerns that the both neighbors have will be addressed uh, at that time through the DSP process. Correct. Um, I wanted to see if there was any, any presentations or questions with regards to that so I can answer those. Very well, let's do that. Um, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in to speak to this application or is there anyone in attendance who has raised their hand to speak to this application? There is nobody, Madam Chair. Okay, very well. If, if you'd like, Mr. Kovacenko, just for the record, you can uh, address them since you have received both letters and then uh, we can take the matter into committee. Yes, so the first concern, uh, actually the first concern that we received was from uh, Mr. Mar uh, Mrs. Ms. Marilyn and Scott Patterson from 481 Orchard Drive, and they're just behind this property. Um, they're noting that their property, 42 Brookside, sits lower, and the water runoff uh, tends to uh, go backwards towards their property. And they have further made a point that um, whoever built the garage previously on the property is also uh, dumping water towards their property. And so they have concerns regarding the, uh, the grading and the drainage. So um, as with all um, new builds, we will be subject to the um, uh, DESP review, which stands for uh, Development Engineering Review, I believe. Um, and that's a very rigorous process. We've, we've uh, it actually has been getting harder and harder to uh, to comply with some of the stormwater requirements. And on the last two applications in this neighborhood that we did, we had to put in uh, uh, drainage pits, soakaway pits, uh, because there wasn't capacity at the road sewers or uh, stormwater um, uh, pipes. Uh, so I suspect that we're, we may be asked to do the same thing here. And of course we will, we will comply. We'll have to document uh, with, you know, calculations provide calculations to, to show how the stormwater is being um, taken away from the property, not adjacent properties, but through um, you know, good practices of stormwater management. So definitely that will be addressed. The other letter was received from uh, Anne and Greg Schneider, and they have two concerns as well. The first one is very much in line with the first uh, property. They, they're noting the, uh, the tight side yards uh, they're concerned that um, the four foot or 1.2 meter setback is, is not enough to mitigate grain, uh, a drainage and grading. And um, what I will say is that uh, we are uh, in compliance with the, um, with the side yards. And again, we will be in compliance with the DESB uh, process and, and make sure that the water is drained away appropriately from the site. Um, and the second issue uh, is regarding the demolition and excavation of the home and they're noting concerns about uh, digging out the basement and uh, potentially affecting their footings and their property on the side, which is adjacent to ours. Um, so again, there's a part of the building permit process uh, does require both the architect, myself, as well as the owner and the builder to provide a methodology for uh, excavation and um, protection of the excavation. And those, those measures are uh, somewhat prescribed within the building code and are further uh, sometimes reviewed by geotechnical engineers, depending on the, on the height of the excavation here at the depth, um, you know, showing may be required. So um, we will make sure that we comply with uh, all safety measures and all excavation precautions. Um, and we will be providing those uh, guarantees uh, through the building permit uh, application process to the town. Thank you, Mr. Hobosenko. Um, are there any questions or further items of clarification before we take the matter into committee? I heard that. I'm sure all of you did. Okay, I, I see none. I, I seem to keep losing Mr. Hardcastle, but um, who would like to make a motion? Oh, there we are. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, having uh, reviewed the applicant's written uh, application as well as uh, <clears throat> noting that the town's written staff report is in support of the application. Also having taken into account the presentation this evening, noting that there were no uh, oral objections at the presentation this evening. I do want to note though that there were, I believe, two letters of objection uh, with regards to the application of which the applicant's agent has addressed uh, in the comments and also noting that some of those concerns uh, could be reviewed at uh, the uh, DSP uh, meeting. Um, I note that the garage floor area <coughs> um, is tandem, uh, so I don't see any negative impacts from that. And then as well, noting that the um, residential floor area, uh, the applicant has uh, um, made, uh, um, you know, that is part of the, uh, the massing is scaled back by stepping back the uh, the, the the building in a, a number of areas, and then as well with regards to the lot coverage, that uh, you know that is mainly attributed to the covered porch in the rear. So having said that, I don't really find those uh, having a negative impact on the neighborhood. I do think that this application is minor in nature, and that it does meet the intent of the. Uh, bylaws and the uh, planning act. So I would like to move that the motion be approved as applied for uh, with the following two conditions, that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings submitted for the proposed dwelling dated 02-17-2022 and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit is not being issued for the proposed construction. Very well, thank you, Mr. Fleming. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Good evening, Mr. Kobasang. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and committee members. Have a good night. Um, Application CAV 055 of 2022 at 518 Morrison Road. Again, this is application CAV 055 of 2022 at 518 Morrison Road. If you're inter interested in speaking to this application, please call for 905. I lost the number. 815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Enzo Lacaseno. I'm from ArchDWG at 130 Bridgeline Avenue in Toronto. Good evening, Mr. Lacaseno. Go ahead, sir. Um, I don't have a, a formal presentation, but we can look at the site plan. That's a survey. Perfect. So we are, the proposal is to construct two um, dormers, one at the front, one at the rear, and a uh, front covered uh, uh, roof over the, uh, the existing porch. Uh, the variances, that we're dealing with are the the porch uh, roof will be zero to the property line. Plus we know we have an encroachment agreement that we're going through the process right now of identifying uh, with, uh, with staff. Um, the other uh, variance is to the dormer on the flankage side uh, where the uh, requirement is 3.5 meters and we have a, an existing 1.2 meters uh, because the dormer does align with the, um, the existing uh, flankage of the house. 
Uh, the other variance we're dealing with is an existing shed that is currently encroaching and will be moved. Uh, the existing height of that shed is 2.6 meters, where the requirement is 2.5. Um, other than that, this uh, project meets all the tests. Uh, and um, I would take any questions from staff. Very well. Thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Lopisano at this time? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, to town staff, uh, I note that one of the conditions is the requirement to remove or relocate the existing shed. Um, does that change um, any of the variances for maximum lot coverage? Um, through you, Madam Chair, no, I do, do not believe it changes any of the variances. It's the shed that they're planning on keeping. We just wanted to make it very clear that it had to be off of the town property. Um, so it should not be a problem in terms of lot coverage. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Talowski, go ahead, sir. Just on clarification on the last comment from Catherine, the requested condition says removal of the existing, okay, all from town property. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Tlowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I move that this application be approved as applied for. I find that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. The construction proposed will not have an impact in my assessment. I would note that there's no objection from the community and I'd make that uh, approval subject to Development proceeding in general accordance with the site plan and elevation drawings dated uh, January 20th, 2022, subject to the removal of the existing shed and fence from municipal property. Uh, that the approval expires within two years if building permit hasn't issued, and that the owner enter into an encroachment agreement with the town. Very well, thank you, Mr. Talowski. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Lopisano. Thank you very much, have a good evening. Good evening. Uh, We're at CV 056 of 2022. Uh, Mr. Flemington, uh, we'll just wait till, um, and the Secretary Treasurer um, uh, takes you out. That didn't sound right, takes you out. <laughs> I, I felt like James Bond for a second. <laughs> um, all right, so Mr. Flemington has exited the meeting and we are ready to move on to CAV 056 of 2022 at 87 Allen Street. Again, that's application CAV 056 of 2022 at 87 Allen Street. Who do we have tonight? If anyone is interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Good evening, Mr. Rockcliffe. Good evening. My name is Roman Rockcliffe. Uh, I own Rockcliffe Custom Homes. I want to thank the committee and the town for reviewing our application. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud okay. and clear. Okay, good. Um, the said property, I'm acting on behalf of the client, Matt Dorsey. The said property is at 87 Allen Street. Um, there's a very small variance required of 1.93% uh, on coverage. Um, this is obviously a very sensitive uh, heritage district. We've been through uh, extensive meetings with the heritage planning and heritage committee uh, regarding these. Many concessions were made along the way. I don't have a presentation prepared. I do feel the, the, the variance is minor in nature, so I would just uh, 
ask the committee if they have any questions. Very well, thank you. Are there any questions or items of clarification of Mr. Rockliffe at this time? Okay, I see none. Uh, if no one has called in for this application or anyone has raised their hand in attendance to speak to this application, Madam Secretary Treasurer, then we can take the matter into committee. There is no phone calls. Okay, thank you. Uh, who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Murray, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town staff written, uh, st pardon me, the town's written staff report, which I note that the town uh, staff is in support of this uh, minor variance. Um, uh, having noted that there seems to be no one from the public that is, has um, wished to speak uh, to this uh, variance. I'm satisfied that the minor variance proposed um, meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application, um, subject that the addition to this to the conditions that the additions be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations drawing dated February 10th, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision if a building permit has not been issued for the construction. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. Okay, all those in support? Yeah, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Rockford. Thank you. Good night. We'll bring Mr. Flemington back. Hello, Mr. Flemington. Okay, uh, we're proceeding to application CAV057 of 2022 at 529 Maple Avenue. Again, this is application CAV057 of 2022 at 529 Maple Avenue. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions. Uh, we do have 10 letters of support from various neighbors in the neighborhood um, on record. Um, good evening, Mr. Rawi. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and uh, member of the committee. Uh, I'm the designer and agent for the application. My name is Raid Rawi from Professional Floor Plans. I, uh, uh, I'm at 5147 Preservation Circle, Mississauga, Ontario, and 5M74. The application is only for a, one minor variance, which is the floor area ratio. And the lot is small, it's 496 uh, square meter, and we are seeking the approval for increasing the floor area ratio from uh, 2,105 uh, square feet to almost uh, 2,502 uh, square feet with an increase of 350 uh, square feet total. The percentage looks like it's a little bit uh, large, but this is based on the lot size. We have discussed the design and uh, its requirements with the planning staff, and uh, we kept the design in con contrast with the remaining uh, uh, neighborhood landscape, and also we considered all the staff comments to have it uh, Accepted, con consider the proceedings applications uh, will to be in line with them. So I think the uh, request is minor and will be uh, accepted by everybody. And uh, the neighbors were uh, pleased to uh, accept this without any concern. I'm ready for any question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rawi. Uh, are there any questions or comments or items of clarification at this time? Okay, I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, if no one has raised their hand or has uh, um, called in for this application, we'll take the matter into committee. Uh, there is no one with the phone call. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Harkassel, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed the materials, including the written staff report and the uh, applicants um, submitted materials as well as the presentation, I'm satisfied that the requested variance conforms to the four tests of the act. The um, architectural design does an excellent job of reducing the perceived mass of the building to the degree in which there will be minimal to no impacts on the existing established uh, neighborhood. As such, I'll put forward a motion of approval subject to two conditions. Um, those conditions being that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings submitted for the proposed dwelling dated February 28th, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Uh, I would note that there were um, 10 letters of support provided in support of this application. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Is there any discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support. Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Good evening, Mr. Robbie. Good evening. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank Okay, we are moving on to application CAV058 of 2022 at 312 King Street. Again, it's application CAV058 of 2022 at 312 King Street. Um, if you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instruction. I will note that we do have uh, five letters of support on record and good evening. Um, you are um, muted, Mr. Esposito. Sorry about that, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Craig Esposito, I'm with John Wilmot Architect and we're the agent uh, for the owners of the property at 312 King Street. Uh, we've read the staff report and note that they've uh, supported the variances requested uh, and, the, and the report's quite detailed um, with the variances. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just briefly summarize the three variances uh, that we're asking for. Uh, the first variance is for reduced flankage setback of 1.07 meters, which allows for the reconstruction of an existing one-story uh, addition with the same setback. And, and you can see that in, in slide one on that site plan, um, the circled area, that's the, that's the existing uh, setback and the, the dark shaded area is the existing uh, one-story addition that's being, uh, being uh, rebuilt. Uh, the second variance is for a small increase in lot coverage, uh, which goes from 25 to 25.69%. Um, it's worth noting that the, the existing lot coverage, the existing dwelling is 25.2%. And then the third variance is to permit an increased residential flow rate of 37.47%, uh, which is a small increase over the, again, the current flow area ratio of the existing dwelling, which is already at 36.89, uh, where the zoning bylaw permits a maximum of 30%. Uh, both the increase in the coverage and the flow area allow for a small one-story addition and a second floor bay window addition, uh, which are internal to the lot and would have no inverse, sorry, adverse impact on the surrounding properties. Uh, just also going to point out that the property is, is also designated under Part 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act as part of the old Oakville Heritage Conservation District. And we've uh, had consultation with heritage planning staff, and they're also in support of the application. Uh, but noting that the heritage permit will be required prior to a building permit. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I'm happy to answer any questions from members of the committee. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions or items of um, clarifications from Mr. Esposti at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, if there is no one who is waiting to speak to this application or has called in, Madam Secretary Treasurer, we'll move on to take the matter into committee. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, there is no phone calls. 
Very well, thank you. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, having reviewed the uh, <clears throat> applicant's written submission, uh, as well as noting that the town's written staff report is in support of the application. Um, also noting that there were five letters of support for the application and that there was no oral or written objections to the application as submitted. I would like to move a motion uh, in favor of the application, uh, noting that uh, you know some of the variances were technical in nature, considering that um, you know the flankage yard was you know currently 1.07 meters. Um, I don't see any negative impact on any of the neighbors by any of the variances being requested, and. Um, I find that it's minor in nature, meets the intent of the uh, bylaws and the um, the act. I'd like to include the following two or three conditions. Um, <clears throat> one, that the ground floor and second floor additions uh, and renovations of the existing dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated February 17, 2022, subject to the removal of the existing wire fence from the King Street Municipal property. And two, uh, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision. The building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. And three, that the owner enter into an encroachment agreement with the town of Oakville to the satisfaction of the director of transportation and engineering. Very well, thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, have Great. a good night. Thank you, you too. Application CV 059 um, of 2022 at 2354 Rebecca Street. Again, it's application CV 059 of 2022 at 2354 Rebecca Street. Um, if you are interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions uh, to join the video conferencing. I will note that we do have one letter of objection uh, from a Mr. Tilo and Doris Blankenfeld. Um, and uh, the agent is Mr. Don't? Yes. Good evening. Yes. Um, hi, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torresdale Avenue, agent for the owner. Um, this is a fairly straightforward application uh, proposing to construct a two-story dwelling to accommodate family livability needs. Uh, we're requesting one uh, variance for a proposed RFA of 43.92%. Uh, the proposal was designed to mitigate its massing impact by stepping back the second story in specific locations at the front and rear, as shown on the elevations. Uh, we're not requesting any height, lot coverage, or setback variances, which further mitigates impact. I'm hearing kind of a, a feedback. Yeah, we've been having that uh, problem uh, the entire night. I apologize. Okay, that's all right. Um, and uh, as a nearby example, 287 Jennings Crescent, uh, which is just southeast to the rear of the dwelling and backs onto the neighboring house uh, at 2366 Rebecca Street, uh, was approved in 2017 for a 44% RFA. Uh, planning was consulted with during the design process and with the recommendations, a number of variances were eliminated and the 
RFA variance was reduced to what is being proposed today. Uh, as you can see in the attached planning staff report, there are no objections uh, to the variance. I'd like to point out that we have uh, read the neighbor's letter from uh, 315 Sussex Street, uh, who spoke about the disruption on their street from other uh, construction of homes uh, on Rebecca Street in the past. Uh, while their concerns are not directly uh, variance related and would also apply if the proposal was as of right, uh, we do appreciate the neighbors voicing their concerns and the owner uh, will do everything he can to, cons to uh, be considerate to neighbors during the construction process. Um, overall, we feel the application is reasonable and uh, minor in nature. I'd uh, be happy to answer, uh, to answer any questions you may have. Um, you, are, you are aware of uh, the condition with respect to the Oakville hydro pole that is uh, supposed to be relocated if you choose to maintain the design that you've submitted? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, are there any items of clarifications or questions, uh, Mr. Doma, at this time? Okay, I see none. Uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called or uh, raised their hand to speak to this application? Um, there, there is no phone calls. Okay, very well. Um, we'll take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's written staff report, uh, which I will note is in support uh, of the minor variance, um, having taken into consideration the comments presented by the applicant in the presentation um, this evening, um, also taking into account the uh, letter of concern or objection from 315 Sussex with regards to the nuisance related to um, uh, construction, not with, notwithstanding that um, those may be valid concerns, they are, are to a certain degree outside the committee's um, purview. Yeah. So I am satisfied the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application subject to the following conditions in that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan to the satisfaction of the director of planning and elevation drawings dated March 8th, 2022, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if the building permit hasn't been issued and that the owner satisfy the Oakville Hydro um, uh, uh, needs with respect to the relocation and or removal of the hydro pole if necessary. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Good evening, Mr. Dome. Thank you very much. Okay, we are at the um, last item of our evening. It's uh, CAV 017 of 2022, deferred from February 8th of 2022 at 54 Germorda Drive. Again, it's CAV 017 of 2022 at 54 Germorda Drive. Good evening, Mr. Aldred. Yes, uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members. Uh, for the record, my name is Bill Outridge. Um, address is 2140 Winston Park Drive, Suite 28, Oakville, Ontario. Here representing the owners of 54 Jermorda Drive. Uh, this was an application that we deferred a few months back um, as a result of uh, our planning, uh, still having an issue pertaining to the, uh, the residential floor area. Uh, we did defer and we did um, do some uh, changes uh, specifically to the second floor to uh, reduce the massing and also reduce the residential floor area. Pardon me? No, we've been having this um, uh, feedback uh, the whole night. It, it goes and comes, so we apologize. Okay, no, no problem. Um, so as I said, we, we did do some uh, reductions in the residential floor area and uh, it was satisfactory for uh, planning to uh, support uh, the three variances that uh, we are proposing here. Uh, I'll just go through the three variances uh, briefly. Uh, the first being residential floor area. 
Uh, we are proposing uh, a 41.54% uh, residential floor area, whereas 38% is required. So we're approximately uh, 33 meters squared over uh, the required residential floor area. Once again, <clears throat> planning um, agreed that uh, with the massing of the, uh, the front elevation and uh, losing some additional uh, second floor area, it reduced the massing of the, the front uh, elevation specifically. And as a result, uh, they, they now support uh, that particular variance. Uh, the second variance is for lot coverage. Uh, we are asking for 28.35%, whereas 25% uh, um, is uh, required in this instance. It's about an increase of 31.2 square meters. Um, you reduce the, um, the covered porches and such, and I think we're pretty close to 25%. And as I said, I think it is in, 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 in keeping with uh, other homes on the street that have been uh, rebuilt recently. I, I believe that um, there wasn't a lot of variances on the street, but um, certainly I don't believe that 28% uh, in this instance is anything out of context with any, any of the new builds. Uh, the third variance is uh, uh, a setback, front yard setback, 8.18 meters uh, to 7.55 meters being required. So it's a re reduction of 0.63 meters. It's really just a technical item just because of the configuration of the lot. You can see from the site plan, the, uh, the front line uh, uh, does angle. And as a result, there's an architectural column on the one uh, front side of the, uh, the house that actually is within that front yard requirement. So once again, it's just that one um, architectural feature on the, on the dwelling that requires the, uh, the setback. Uh, the side yards uh, meet the bylaw, the rear yard meets the bylaw. Uh, we are in keeping with the, uh, the height uh, requirements, uh, no other variance is required. So just as a summary, um, as you said, we have uh, worked with planning to uh, have them be satisfied with what the proposal is here. I believe it's within the context of the character of the area, especially you know, the, the new homes. Um, it's a good looking uh, a home as far as the architectural elevations and we'd ask for the, uh, the committee support. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Go ahead, Ms. Murray, I think you have a question. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, it's uh, for the for town staff. Um, when I reviewed the documents um, on the website, um, I only see a plan for a second floor. I didn't see anything for a first or a basement. Uh, um, through you, Madam Chair, I guess that, that might be directed towards the Secretary Treasurer. Um, it so might, might be. A, uh, um, I can. I know I on the can, public website we don't have floor plans, we don't, but we maybe don't. in the circulation. No, no, I'm I'm yeah. on our website uh, signed signed in, and I there is only a second floor. There's eight pages in total. Um, there are the uh, the renderings on page seven, and there is only one one uh, second floor uh, that is shown, and it's the last page eight. Um. I can check that for you again back, but um, I can't do right now. I'm trying to do right now, if you want oh, to oh. No, I was, I was just not trying to follow along with some of the comments and I, I couldn't, because I wasn't all there. I'm, if I could speak to that. Um, I think we originally put the or submitted the full drawings as part of the original application. And by the looks of it, I just had a quick look. It looks like uh, what we submitted uh, back in, I guess it was early March to get the new hearing date was just the revised elevations. Um, could nothing else have changed. So I think just what's posted on the website is only what we resubmitted uh, back in March as opposed to the full submission back in January, if that's of any help. Uh, it is. It is. Thank you. And I was absent for that meeting. So uh, maybe I should abstain. I don't have the full picture. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or items of clarification? I just want to make sure uh, you're looking for the second floor plan, Mrs. Murray. I Sorry, no, I was looking for the entire package. 
and I, since I was not at the first meeting where it was deferred and the package we have before us only includes the second floor. So it, I, I, I guess my, my follow-up question is, is there a mechanism for me to abstain procedurally? I thought I, um, I'm asking the question uh, right now, I think. I, 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 I'm under, if I remember correctly, I think the chair is the only one that can abstain, but let's get clarification on that. Uh, certainly you can abstain from the voting if you, if you want um, the procedure. Okay. Yeah, so we, we do the, by, the procedural bylaws say that you can, if you wish to abstain, you can. Th thank you. Since I was not at that previous meeting and, and perhaps may not have a full picture, I, I will not vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, can, you, can you hold for a second? I just want to clarify that for you. Just a second, please. Madam Chair, yes, she can abstain, uh, Mrs. Murray can abstain from the voting, correct? Okay, okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary Treasurer. You're welcome. Okay, so who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'd be pleased to move approval of this application as applied for. I think that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I would note that there was no objection from the community. I believe the redesign um, does an appropriate job of mitigating any potential impact of mm -hmm. the variances Madam and that the uh, front yard setback is very technical in that the vast majority of the house is meets or exceeds the required minimum setback. Madam Chair, sorry. Uh, sorry, I have to stop you for a second. There is a person who uh, is in attendees and I'm not sure if um, that person wants to speak. So if you can repeat before you move the motion, if somebody wants to um, have any word in regards to this application would be great. Sorry, Sorry. Mr. Talowski. Sorry. Um, I think, I, I, th I thought I did, but sure. Um, if there's anyone in attendance who would like to speak to this application, um, please raise your hand and we'll invite you to speak to the panel. It could be someone that, that's just lingering or attending the rest of the meeting. Um, I do Have they raised their hand? Uh, no, no, they uh, he didn't raise the hand. So I, I'm guessing he doesn't want, because it's the phone call from the uh, late after work and he wanted to uh, participate in at the meeting. And I sent the link, but um, and I see him, but I don't know if he wants to speak or not. Is there a way for you to reach out uh, on the side? Um, not on the... No, I, I don't have any power. Okay, I'll announce it one more time. If there's anyone in attendance who would like to speak to this application, please raise your hand or alternatively call 905-815-6095 and you'll be giving further instructions to join the video conference. OK, 
Okay, if they haven't done so, we'll move back into motion. I apologize, Mr. Tarski, go ahead, sir. Madam Chair, I'd still be pleased to move approval of this application then. Uh, finding it meets the four tests, the Planning Act, and I don't feel that the variances will have any impact. I would make that approval subject to the dwelling being built in general accordance with the site plan and elevation drawing stated March 9th, 2022, and that approval will expire if a building permit doesn't issue within two years. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, um, the uh, motion has passed. Um, your application has been approved, uh, none opposed, and um, Ms. Murray has uh, abstained. Okay, thank you. Have a great Thanks. night. Thanks, Mr. Outred. Good, good night. We have uh, minutes to move for March the 22nd. Ms. Murray moves the minutes, thank you. And we have motion to adjourn. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. And we are adjourned at 8.31 p.m.